We're back day two of Canatech here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I am uh, very, very uh, honored that um, Michelle Santos is joining us. Uh, Michelle, welcome to the Infuse Show. Yes, so pleased to be here with you, Nick, today. It was uh, it was lovely when we were setting up uh, the, a couple days ago. I just heard somebody back me say, Jersey, and I, I didn't even realize I was, I was uh, wearing my stone pony uh, hooded sweatshirt from Asbury Park, New Jersey. So you're, you came all the way from the East Coast like me. Yes, you're rocking your stone pony uh, <laughs> s- sweaty, sweat hood. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and and I, I said, who is this guy from New Jersey? I said, hey, Jersey's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. Frank's a Jersey boy. It was good to see other East Coast people out here. Um, and man, I, I, I'm not used to the weather out here. Yes. These are some strong, strong individuals that can deal with this on a daily basis. Yes, but you're from the East Coast. We're, we're <laughs> yeah. used to this. We're resilient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and so I, I, I really, really uh, am honored you gave us some of your time today, Nichelle. Uh, she's the founder of Canna Coverage. Canna Coverage, we've got you covered. And I want to say right away, uh, you have a fantastic logo. Oh, thank you. Can you guys all see it? Yeah, yeah. we can see. Um, now, who designed that? Do you, something the team came up with? Or? Yes, something the team came up with. Uh, Canna Coverage, uh, we're insurance services risk management consulting. And we wanted to let uh, the cannabis industry know that we've got you covered. Yeah. Um, as folks move from the, leg- the legacy market to legal, uh, that you can come out and, and showcase your business and move forward with resilience and sustainability. So we thought it was important for that logo to reflect that. Yeah. That, um, we're your partner in this journey. And uh, the umbrella effect, we've got you covered. Let us cover you. And... Uh, a step into can of coverage. Well, it really, it really speaks to the, the the essence of this industry that I really, really dig, and it's that it is communal. It's a community, and and people we, we do partner with one another. I mean, our, our tagline over on the sales joint is "No one grows alone," and it's it's again, it's another thing about uh, having uh, having each other's back, covering yes. you. So, and you know, you know a thing or two about that. I wanna I wanna know more about uh, you know reducing risk in this industry and and how you help. The people that I work with, like cultivators and dispensaries. Yeah, so uh, Canna Coverage is a national insurance consulting firm. And as we've traveled from the East Coast to the West Coast, we've just found that 85% of all cannabis businesses <laughs> are underinsured, which means that they have no insurance, they have the wrong type of insurance because you can't go to uh, your tr- traditional carrier like Travelers or sure. Chubb or State Farm, they don't have you covered. Yeah. But uh, we work with um, uh, the, the niche market okay. uh, of carriers who provide the services, the, the insurance products that are very much needed um, to cover the risks um, inherent to the cannabis industry. Okay. Okay. So, so can you tell us, like, who's your typical client? Would you say? Oh, we work with all sectors of the cannabis industry from uh-huh. dispensaries to cultivation mm-hmm. and manufacturers, all the ancillary um, businesses surrounding cannabis. I was going to ask you about ancillary business because that, that's something I, I, I imagine people would, would have this thought process, not that it's an incorrect thing or a bad thing. It might be incorrect, but hey, I'm an ancillary business. I don't handle the plant. What do I got to worry about? That's right. That's where you there's, come in. There's a lot to worry about, Nick. <laughs> Tell us a little bit. <laughs> Cannabis is a risky business. Yes. Um, so you do not have to touch the plant uh, to be <laughs> exposed. If, if you're a professional and you're making recommendations to a cannabis business as an attorney, as an accountant, um, you're providing really important information that's integral to the success of their business. And... Um, if there is a claim, if something happens, you know, product liability is a big issue, for example. Uh-huh. Uh, if someone um, ingests an edible and it doesn't agree with them and they end up hospitalized or there's a psychotic effect and uh, they commit a crime during that, uh, you know, everyone from seed to sale, including all the ancillary businesses, who's their accountant, who's their attorney, who advise them, they are all liable. So uh, especially for the ancillary businesses, it's really important to have like 
It's called Directors and Officers uh, Liability Insurance. It's that professional liability. Okay. And most people are really surprised to, to hear about that. They're like, oh, no, we I have insurance. Yeah. But if, if, the, if you have a claim um, and you're an attorney, for example, and they find out, oh, well, this is a cannabis claim and you're not covered under your traditional insurance, it definitely has to be covered under cannabis insurance. Wow. Wow. So is that, do you, do you have like a, is there like a typical set of questions people are hitting you with at a show like this? Yeah. Do I really need insurance? <laughs> it's just that one. <laughs> hey, I'm good, right? Yes. Probably, probably a lot of people trying to do some free consulting, but like, I'm all right, right? Yeah, we're, we're okay. We have our <laughs> SOPs, maybe, you know, we, we have a stack of papers in the corner. And yeah. It, just in case we get an inspection and we can just hold up, you know, a piece of paper and say, <laughs> this is our program. But it's our job uh, to really partner with the cannabis businesses out uh-huh. there and help stand up their standard operating p- procedures, their SOPs, bring best practices to them. Because we work with uh, uh, cannabis businesses all across the country. Yeah. So we've seen what works, what doesn't work, uh, what effective management practices are. And uh, we just want to help people navigate through the ever-changing landscape of uh, the cannabis industry. Absolutely. Especially as you go from state to state. Um, the laws are and consistent even within the state, yeah. especially a state like Oklahoma, uh, where the, the, the laws in, uh, differ from county to county. Yeah. Um, in the state of New Jersey, the municipalities um, differ. Um, oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> we yes. learned that in the news uh, just before the end of the year, right, with it, uh, opting in or out. The, the municipalities don't really see eye to eye, do they? Yes, there's still a lot of confusion. Um, Everyone's playing the wait and see game. Sure. Let's let's wait and see how the state really stands up the framework uh, for laws and for compliance. And there's no standards right yeah. that exist right now. Yeah. So it's it's our job to again help um, implement standard operating procedures, risk management practices that will help uh, organizations operate efficiently, mm-hmm. effectively, and uh, maximize their return on investment. Wow. And I mean, with the regulations, I mean, and changing, like t- Oklahoma, for example, has to be a lot of research that goes into what you do. I mean, yes. and staying on top of state to state, and in some cases, municipality by municipality, that's, a, that's incredible work. Yeah, we, we do the best we can to keep up with uh, the laws that are emerging. However, yeah. with insurance risk management practices uh, as the foundation of your operation, it, it, it doesn't matter uh-huh. what, um, it, well, it, it matters, but it doesn't. If you're following best practices sure. and uh, you bring in process safety management into your organization and you have effective training and it's documented and um, it becomes a part of the culture of your can of business, um, then you're more likely to succeed. You'll have uh, less problems, uh, less claims, and um, increase the profitability of your organization. So you need to be resilient yeah. in order to be sustainable. And you do that through strong risk management Absolutely. Practices. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, now that the show here in Oklahoma is important for our crew to get out here because we've been working in Oklahoma um, and as trade shows, you know, begin to emerge and happen Mm -hmm. again after our our two year hiatus of doing events like this and meeting new people. um, Has Oklahoma been a good show for you so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. You know, the ice storm didn't ha- yeah, help. Yeah, that, that didn't help. That However, uh, the exhibitors, the other business owners here are, are really extraordinary. Really? Um, yeah. I, I think uh, the, the seminars have been outstanding. Absolutely. Uh, each, each seminar I attended, I learned a little bit more. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's all about um, collaborating with one another. If Absolutely. We, we all want to see the cannabis industry be successful. Uh, and we have to work together. Absolutely, yeah. stronger together, especially in our industry. Um, are you are you heading to any other uh, shows in the future? We're going to uh, meet new people because we were just discussing. We were both at CWCB Expo back in November. Yes. What are the plans for kind of coverage uh, 
travel schedule coming up? Uh, we'll be in Grand Rapids next month. Oh, good. Uh, we'll also be at the uh, show in Atlantic City in June. Okay. Uh, we'll be doing CW. Uh, CW CWCBE CB, yes. yeah it's always it's t- 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 <laughs> tough to get off Jacob Javits Center yeah yeah just say the one <laughs> at the Javits that. Center all right so we're gonna see you at both of those yeah so make sure you stop by and talk to us again absolutely and we'll be at MJ Biz of course MJ Biz I think yes. we're gonna return to that one as well yeah, that they was just spectacular. they just released the dates that thing but man that is a, you your your feet feel it. After yes. that one, that's a big yes. show. <laughs> yes, it's phenomenal. So let uh, make sure uh, because we know the uh, from people that watch this and and listen to this, I know that people are going to want to get in touch with you. So how do we find you? Yes, uh, www.cannacoverage.net, and that's C A N N A coverage C O V E R A G E dot N E T. All right. Well, listen, and we can also get you on, uh, make sure you follow on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and look, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Nichelle. I yes. really hope we get to do it again uh, at these shows coming up. So thank you so much for giving us your time today. Yes. Thank you so much, Nick. All right. Great we'll see you see next you. time. All, All right. right. Take Bye-bye. care. Day two of the Emerging Industries Professionals Canatech Expo here in Tulsa. It's a little bit... Um, I don't know. You're going to say it's a little bit more. Uh, uh, the weather is just a little bit better than it was yesterday, Frank, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's all the way up to 29 degrees, and I'm thrilled. Uh, I have Jen Wynn here, who's the VP of Expos, um, and you are hosting a, a, an excellent show, by the way. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm so impressed by your team, top to bottom. Um, ha, you know, you overcame a challenge quite early. Yesterday didn't start the way you would want, did it? No. <laughs> It was not ideal, so we adapted quickly and um, made the best of it. You know, but you certainly did. I mean, you can't control the weather um, and, and we, you know, the, the ice and the snow and the unpleasant conditions um, may have caused some delays for some people. But, man, we went up and running, and we had a good first day. Were you pleased with what you got? Yes, we definitely had the right audience here. So the ones that came out um, were who we would want to be here um, with the focus of business. So. Um, I think most of our exhibitors had some really good conversations, and that's you know, what we aim for. So Yeah, to use a cannabis term, you do have like a, a real broad spectrum of exhibitors and people to talk to at this show. Um, so people really do get the bang for their buck. Um, they can have a lot of questions answered, and just about every little individual facet of the business is represented here at Canatech. And that's our goal is to always bring in, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a dispensary, there's businesses here that you can talk to. If you're a grower, um, you know, pretty much any part of the business, we try to make sure we have um, exhibitors that can help you with whatever you need for your business. So, Jen, could you tell us a little bit about your, your path into this industry? Sure. So, um, our company has always done marketing um, for businesses um, in any industry. And in 2019, I guess, my boss decided um, we had a directory for cannabis, and he saw the need for these expos and started in Michigan, Uh um, called me and was like, hey, can you come help me put together this expo? Uh, Sure, I'll try. I don't, you know, we haven't ever done them before. So Michigan was very successful, and in 2019, we did five of them um, in emerging markets, so Uh um, kind of all over. Um, And then... So Oklahoma would have been our second one that year. Um, Was very successful. Um, Had some schedules for 2020, which didn't go so great, obviously. (laughs) And then last year we did four of them. Um, And then currently we um, have four Canatech Expos scheduled, a MedTech and a GreenTech for this year. Wow. Busy schedule for you guys. It is. It is. We're starting to look at 2023. So getting that one ready to go. But it's, yep. it's such a refreshing thing that you mentioned 2020. I mean, it's, it's just refreshing that we're back and we can do this again. Yes. So you got to be grateful for every little moment there. Can I ask you something about planning uh, a, a cannabis trade show in particular? Because I imagine uh, just that one word has to make things a little bit more difficult organizing an event. It's, it's, a, it's like when you go to book a hall. They, they yes. tell you, don't say it's for a wedding. Say it's for a party. <laughs> don't say the W word. It, does the cannabis word make things a little bit more difficult for organizing something like this? Definitely. And especially venues that haven't done them in the past because they you know, all think that we're coming in there and everybody is smoking and you're just having this big 
pot party. I'm like, mm, that's not exactly what happens. It's the business of cannabis. So, yeah. you know, that is our focus. That's why we do it during the week and not on weekends. Yeah. Um, we try to keep our audience, you know, business-like. So. Yeah, and it is. It's a, it's a great environment here. Um, as far as what is on the future docket, uh, some shows that our listeners can look forward to in the next few months, could you plug away? Sure. Um, we have, they can go to uh, businessexpos.com which has all of our uh, upcoming events listed. You can look at the show floor. Um, part of our schedule always includes uh, two full days of um, educational seminars led by industry professionals. So you can kind of take a look at that and plan your day around, you know, what you're still needing to learn or, you know, new regulations, um, all different types of um, different aspects of the business are represented in those two. Um, we also always have our show floor up. Um, and then so for the rest of the year, we have a Michigan one in April, um, the 20th and 21st in uh, Mount Pleasant, Michigan at the Soaring Eagle Casino. We have New Jersey, June 14th and 15th in uh, Atlantic City at the Harris Resort. We have a Chicago one, August 3rd and 4th at the Renaissance Convention Center in Schaumburg. Um, then we have our first MedTech in Ohio for September 28th and 29th. And then Vegas is a Green Tech Expo at Bally's on December 8th and 9th. So. Wow, you do have a full docket coming yeah. up. All yeah. right, well, look. We're excited. We're, we're excited, too. Look out, Michigan, New Jersey, Chicago. We've got MedTech coming to Ohio. And we also have a Vegas show, which is always a good time. But I know that we're looking forward to Atlantic City. Uh, and we're really looking forward to doing another show where uh, it's, it's organized by you and your team. Because this one has been really impressive. And we can't thank you enough for the uh, care and attention that you've put into the whole thing. You've done a great job, so you should take a bow. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you guys here. All right. My guest has been Jen Wynn, again, the VP of Expos, Emerging, emerging Industries Professionals. Uh, I'm, I'm losing it, Frank, with, with the, <laughs> I need a drink of water here. Um, but, Jen, thank you so much, and thanks to your team. Thank you. It's the Infuse Show. We're back day two of Canatech here in Tulsa. And I always say at shows like this, it brings you in contact with so many important new developments in our industry. That's why I'm so happy to be joined by Alex Burnett. Uh, Alex is the principal owner and the consultant for Cana Innovations. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks you, Nick. Thank you. Um, you know, you came from Oklahoma City here to the... It, to Tulsa, how many shows like this are you planning to do in the coming year? Uh, we are scheduled for another one end of end of March. End of March. End of March. All right, and, uh, because I think your 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 dance card's going to fill up a little bit, my friend. I think because Alex uh, just got finished giving me a little uh, rundown of his new product, and I've got to tell you, uh, cultivators I know that I've worked with. They're going to be interested in talking to you, my man, because the Harvest Station is not only innovative. We all know that cultivation is backbreaking work. Yes. But you came up with something that is truly, it's going to save knees. It's going to save time. Um, congratulations. Thank Tell you. our listeners a little bit about the Harvest Station. Absolutely. Well, we first got started with a, with a grower back in uh, September. Okay. And I had a chance came, coming out of the corporate world and being a director of continuous improvement for a large corporation, had a lot of experience with lean thinking and uh, introducing lean principles to different companies and really felt like the cannabis industry could, could uh, take advantage of this, okay. could, could see some improvements. And so we worked with this, uh, this grower in Oklahoma City, had a chance to go in there and observe their grow and their harvest, uh, spent maybe four hours that evening watching my GoPro videos. I had uh -huh. two GoPro cameras set up all across the harvest room and um, watched about four hours of video that night. Got on the phone call the next morning yeah. and talked to the owner of the, of the grow and said, hey, if you guys can get on a phone call with me, I've got some things I want you to think about. Wow. And so it, it really took off from there. You know, it, um, we had a chance to look at the operation when the – the plants came out of the room and mm -hmm. actually modifying the way they did their work and breaking down the plants and transporting them to the dry room. And so that's the, the call the next morning. I was able to, to relay to them, uh, change your layout, okay. change your process. And about halfway through the day, I get this text from the owner. Just incredible response. He says, we're one and a half hours into the harvest and we're halfway done. Wow. And he normally takes... Uh, about a day for 
that effort. And so he was ecstatic. Uh, and later that day, I had some ideas after reviewing that video some more. I still have my sketch. I sketched out, <laughs> I sketched out this cart, uh -huh. this workstation, essentially, of how to manage this problem that all cultivators have. Yeah. You know, it's, it's managing the, all the containers of the waste that comes off of the plant, mm -hmm. the trellis, you know, the bamboo sticks, uh, the irrigation spray heads, yeah. all those typically go in a five gallon bucket and those, and, and then you have the root balls. You have to deal with the root balls, the plastic pots, all that has to be managed. Typically it's all scattered about and yeah. that's, uh, that's a huge waste from a lean thinking perspective. We want to minimize that excess motion Yeah, and people don't realize the benefits that you get from that. And it was massive. We were able to introduce a prototype to the team and on their next harvest, we will take, take their typical harvest from two days down to one day. Wow. Just incredible. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the response here has been fantastic. Uh, I think you mentioned that we just released the, the uh, harvest station yesterday for yeah. the first time. Started putting it on the website. The website is just taking off. I've, it's, I just checked my, my website views, and it's just uh, from, I think we increased 200, over 200 views in two days. Wow. It's just incredible. After that, that's, that's a hell of a debut. Yeah. Yeah, it's, take, a, it's, take a bow, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's and been. having that video that I just watched over yeah. at Alex's booth, uh, it was giving me flashbacks of Frank and I when, when we were working with growers in Washington State, and I was thinking, oh, my God, there's the, there's the, the space they're dealing with. There's the issue they're dealing with. Um, the problems that you're able to solve for cultivators, this, this, is, this is a game changer. It, it is, really is. It really is. It's something that, um, you know, I spent a lot of time researching and seeing if there was anything in the industry that solved this problem, uh -huh. and there wasn't. And well, I started to get excited. Yeah. Um, I started working with my son. Uh, he was the one that came up with a lot of the ideas. Yeah. And, and developing the, the, uh, the final model. Okay. And um, he built it in Fusion 360. It's a 3D modeling system. He did all the fabrication. I did some of the fabrication. We built yeah. the prototype together. It's been just a phenomenal experience. That's great, yeah. too. Man, we're working with your son. Oh, man, yeah. Cheers, Absolutely. bud. Yeah. Um, now, look, if cultivators, you also uh, offer uh, consultation uh, services That's as right. well, right? That's right. So, as I mentioned, I came out of the corporate world, uh, taught a lot of different organizations with uh, you know, lean thinking, yeah. how to introduce learning principles, really how to change their mindset. Okay. It's, it really is a mindset change. Sure. And people see that. I, I talk about um, in, my, in my seminar here and in, in my... Uh, in a lot of the training I conduct, mm -hmm. I talk about going through brain surgery. I actually went through brain surgery three years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, and as a result of that, I had a vestibular nerve that was that had to be sacrificed uh, because of a benign tumor on that. And I actually had to relearn how to walk. Oh, my God. Relearn how to walk. It took me four, uh, four months to get back to normal. And I, I put that in every training class that I have because that's what people experience. From going from a normal production standpoint, cultivating or in processing, going into an understanding of lean principles and how that transfers into improving the operational efficiency of your organization is a mind shift. Yeah. And um, working with our client in Oklahoma City, uh, TSGP is the, is the grower there in Oklahoma City, and they're seeing that. Every time I go in and work with them, you see them improve their operation, and they see that they, they start to change the way they think about how they do business. And yeah. they start to see ways to improve, um, you know, different things that they do. Yeah. Spent a couple hours in cloning uh, just uh, about a week ago and uh, was able to walk out of there with some, some uh, suggestions about how you change just the cloning operation. And I got great feedback from from the lady who was doing the cloning. Wow. And uh, within just a four hour um, it's visit. It's like the adage of, uh, you know, just getting another set of eyes on, on a, on a problem, is. but getting your eyes in particular right. on this was is, is incredibly beneficial. And that's one thing, Nick, that we do is, it's, it's you're exactly right. We come in with a different set of eyes. There's consultants that know how to grow cannabis. Uh -huh. I know nothing about growing cannabis. <laughs> 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 but I can help you from a standpoint of, Improving the operational efficiencies. Yeah. I can bring in a different set of eyes, uh, eyes that were in a manufacturing environment, working a lot in lean manufacturing. I can help you improve the operation that you have there. Outstanding. Yeah. So, so if we're going to try to get your help, how do people get in touch with you? Plug the away. Best way is is uh, through our our website. Um, we have several flyers out here at, at the expo. 
but our website is canna-innovations. A lot of people miss the dash, but it is cannainnovations.com. Mm -hmm. uh, please visit that website. We are on Facebook and also on Instagram. So All right, Facebook, and Instagram, Canna Innovations. Don't forget the dot between Canna and Innovations. And you can always email them at info at canna-innovations.com. We're here. We saw the debut with the Harvest Station. Uh, congratulations to you, Alex, thank and you, thank you for joining us today and giving thank us your you. time. It's been great. All right, man. Lot, man. See ya. Canatech in Tulsa is, is drawing to a close here on day two, the final day of this particular show here in the red hot, the red hot Oklahoma cannabis market. And I save the best for last because joining us right now is Rashawn Ford of Golden Mica. Rashawn, thanks for joining us today. Hey, no problem at all. No problem at all. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. You uh, traveled all the way from uh, Illinois. Yes, sir. A good nine-hour drive to get down here. Nine hours in the car. What, Absolutely. What did you do? How'd you, how'd you keep your sanity nine hours in the car and an ice storm when you get here? Your sanity. <laughs> I lost it. What okay. are you talking about? <laughs> well, good. That's, that's the kind of guest I want on Infused. <laughs> nine hours. Well, we're glad oh, you absolutely. made it. You're, we're, gl you're, we're so glad you're here with us. Uh, did you have a good experience at the, at the show? Oh, here? absolutely. Absolutely. I loved it. Absolutely. That was a great show. Um, I loved every exhibitor that I got to talk to, all the vendors. Yeah. All the visitors were great, too. They're such nice people. This was like the strongest lineup of exhibitors. I, I've been around in a long time. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, everybody has, like, a value in this space. Okay. And everybody's been friendly. And I don't know how many people have told me, oh, yeah, uh, the guy in the booth next to me, actually, we're going to work together. Or we're going to look out. Yes. We're going to do something for him. And yeah. that is what sets this industry apart, I think. It, and that's what it's all about, too, right? I mean, yeah. what's the point of networking, right, if you're going to meet a bunch of people and not work with them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, 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 yeah, it goes against the grain. Um, listen, uh, you've been exhibiting here and uh, representing uh, Golden Myco. Tell us a little bit uh, about what you do in the cannabis space. Uh, so, so what Golden Myco is trying to do is supply the growing community with something that is going to give them stronger roots. It's a, it's a root additive, a soil additive. Okay. Really. That's really what it is. All right. Right. And what it does and how it helps the community, it's going to give them better buds. It's going to get them to their harvest faster, right? It's, it's going to give them good quality of their product. Mm -hmm. They're going to be happy, right? They're going to have to work with less putting nutrients into their plants. They're going to spend less money on nutrients. Nutrients is often wasted. Yeah. This is going to save their nutrients. Okay. Absolutely. So, and, and look, if you're bringing better buds to the market, you're Always. you're gonna be you're gonna be a Always. <laughs> you're gonna be a popular guy. <laughs> what's your What's your typical client like? And have you met some? You yeah. know, potential clients yeah. today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, typical client is always, obviously, a grower. Uh -huh. um, working anywhere from 350 to about 8,000 plants. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. And how long, yep. how long has Golden Myco been in the game? So, Golden Myco is actually a brand, right? And what happened before is GTF Solves, the company, okay. was putting out product and blends for different crops. Okay. Right? They're making blends specifically for crops, for corn, wheat, and stuff like that. Well, they're shipping overseas. The whole COVID thing happened. We had to change up some things. Yeah, we'll right? change your plans. The growing business right now in America, cannabis industry. Yeah. So we made a blend and added the, this thing called mycorrhizae, uh -huh. right? And added it to this blend, made it specifically for the cannabis. So people are getting better yields. And I guess a big part of that, uh, that that is really uh, playing in your favor is uh, people in agriculture, the growers already knew you guys. Yes. They already trusted Absolutely. you guys. Absolutely. So you Absolutely. had a kind of an ace in the hole there. Correct. Correct. Uh, Correct. Uh, We're just bringing them something else they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And where do you, uh, do you operate all over? Or are there certain markets that you guys are, are kind of focused on right now? So... See, our manufacturer is in Ohio. Okay. We operate out of Chicago, Illinois. All right. But as far as where we distribute, we're trying to get back into being global again, but anywhere in the U.S. Anywhere in the U.S. Absolutely. Is Illinois' market... It, it, I, we were there. Right. We were in Illinois doing a show. Uh, wow, I think it was 2019. It was right before everything shut down, Rashawn. But it, it, um, you had just gone rec legal, and it seemed like... Yeah, it didn't Look, seem like there was uh, enough to go around, my man. Uh, how absolutely. are things going out there? Things are going good. Yeah, things are going good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on the upside of this. Okay, we're on the upside of this. More dispensaries are open and stuff like that. Yeah, 
Good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, good, yeah. good. I had, nurseries, I, everything. I had yeah. high hopes for that uh, because when we were there at that show, uh, I think it was in Rosemont, Illinois. Yeah. Ro- yeah. Rosemont, Illinois. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the criminal part of this is Frank and I worked that show. And because it was such a grueling schedule, we did not get to go into Chicago proper. Uh, it's a big regret. It's a big regret. Don't give me that look. I, it's not like I don't want to go. I'll cry about it later, man. <laughs> Didn't want to go. Uh, but we did, we did get to try the deep dish. That was cool. Yeah, but, no, I had, so, I had so much um, hope for the future of that uh, of their of your cannabis program in Illinois uh, because we met so many good farmers and so yeah. many incredible cultivators at that show and I was like man this market has potential so absolutely. it's really good to hear that things are on a really really absolutely good absolutely. Path. absolutely I'm happy for it I'm very happy for cool. it very cool very cool well listen if um our listeners want to um get in touch with you or your product where can they go to find you so we're at michaelgold.com okay or golden michael on Instagram. Okay, Golden Michael on Instagram or michaelgold.com. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Listen, today I've had my guest, Rashawn Ford, has been uh, kind enough to give me some time here at Canatech today. And listen, I think you have a great product. I think Thank you have a, a great uh, uh, place in this business. And I, I'm really grateful you gave us some of your time today. Awesome. I appreciate it, man. I Thank you for having me. Seriously. Thank you. I'll see you next time. All right. Yes, sir. All right, man. <laughs>